All right, so let's get into this. I think it's kind of appropriate to start with the first series of GPUs that I remember, which is actually the RX 400 series. So the 400 series, this might actually surprise a lot of you, but I'm going to go ahead and put it in a C tier. The reason is, is because even though the 400 and 500 series are pretty similar architecturally, the 400 series was the first, like the first series to come out. So it obviously kind of bore the brunt of a lot of the issues. Some of the issues included your PC would just randomly turn off. Uh, that was because I believe it was pulling too much power through the actual PCIe slot instead of pulling it through the connectors. And you, as a result, your board would just be like, hey, I don't know what's going on. It would just shut off. It's a safety system. Makes sense why it would happen. But either way, that happened with the 400 series. There were a couple of other performance issues that we're seeing that are very reminiscent to the ARC series where there's shader occupancy issues. But a lot of that got sorted out with the 400 and then the 500 series, but it took about six to seven months for that to happen. 500 series, I'm gonna actually put in the A. The reason was is because it had the same architecture as the 400 series, clocked a little bit faster, but it also didn't have a lot of the issues that the 400 series had, at least that I remember. There could have been issues, but some cards like the 590, which are technically a 580, but just printed on 12 nanometer instead of 14 nanometer, might be kind of stupid buys, but Either way, I think that the 580 is probably one of the more legendary cards, as is the RX 570. Especially those 8GB cards, those are going to be pretty popular probably for the next few years. Up next is the Vega series. Now the Vega series is known for performing about as powerful as a 1070 and 1080. The 56 was, I believe, 1070, 1070 Ti performance. And then the 64 was like standard 1080 performance. So. I'm actually going to go ahead and put this probably in C tier as well. The reason is, is because it just drew too much power for the competition. If we want to talk about the 10 series as competition, which this, that's when the Vegas series launched. So the 10 series was its direct competition. The 10 series was drawing like a 1080 drew like I think 200 ish watts, while the Vega 64 was drawing closer to 300, 350, which is a lot of power especially for a graphics card in 2017. Now we're kind of used to that with like the 30 series and the 40 series isn't that bad, but the 30 series we got kind of used to that. Um, but this was about three years before that, so we weren't really that used to it yet. Now kind of going in chronological order, the 10 series, um, I don't think this is gonna surprise that many of you. Uh, yeah, that's going in the super. Uh, the 10 series was the first cards to basically hit the two gigahertz mark from Nvidia. And as a result, the chips weren't as wide as like the 900 series, which we're gonna go ahead and do next. But the 900 series actually had wider pipelines, but the 10 series clocked so much faster that the 10 series just kicked the crap out of the 900 series. Um, it was significantly more efficient than the 900 series. The efficiency would go on to basically the, lay the groundwork for the performance per watt that we saw from the 20 series and the 30 series. 40 series improved that but the 10 series was really the first that we saw this tier of performance per watt from NVIDIA. And as a result, this was like, I remember when these graphics cards came out, man, these were like the the thing to get. We have like 4090s today. People were way more interested in the, in the 10 series because the 1080 Ti was only like six or $700. And I bet you NVIDIA greatly regrets selling that card for only six or $700. Uh, the 900 series, I'm going to go ahead and put in B. I remember when these cards launched. Uh, I remember when the Titan, or not the Titan, the 980 Ti came out. Um, but I don't remember when any of the other cards came out. I remember the 970 being a pretty budget conscious uh, value option. This was really kind of a huge improvement over Kepler because of the efficiency. And once again, the performance per watt. It uses the same node as Kepler, but because it's using Maxwell 2.0, it's just... It clocks about the same, but it's significantly more efficient. I'm not 100% sure on the design details about that, but I know that the cache sizes grew over Kepler, uh, as well as overall pipeline width, which would make sense as you're actually getting more instructions per clock with the 900 series, which would explain the, the higher performance per watt. Uh, the 900 series overall, though, pretty, not inexpensive, but for the time they were pretty pretty decently priced, especially compared to the competition, which at the time was like, I believe like what, the R9390, which I didn't include in this in this list because that series isn't, isn't supported by AMD anymore. But the 900 series, I remember being a pretty decent value. 
you can still find these cards for pretty decent prices. You can find a 970 probably for less than 100 bucks, probably find one for less than 70 bucks to be honest. I wouldn't really game on one nowadays, but it'll definitely get you started if you're looking for something. But I remember especially the 970 and the 980 Ti were the cards to get back in the day. Up next, let's go ahead and do the 20 series. Now the 20 series, I think this might surprise some some of you, but I think a lot of you may also kind of get where I'm coming from. I'm going to go ahead and put it in the C tier. Now, the reason I'm going to say that is just because these graphics cards, while they had similar performance per watt and similar gains over Pascal, uh, or excuse me, that Pascal made over Maxwell, um, it was just significantly more expensive. Like we're talking five or six hundred dollars more for the 2080 Ti over the 1080 Ti. Nvidia kind of woke up and realized, oh, hey, we probably shouldn't be selling our top tier silicon for 600 bucks. I think that a lot of people kind of lost interest in the 20 series early on. The 2060, even though it was a bit more inexpensive, it was still significantly more expensive than the 1060 at the time. So a lot of people, even back then, would just go with the 1060 over the 2060, even though the 2060, I would argue, was the significantly superior card. But the 1060 at the time was good enough, and a lot of people did couldn't justify spending the extra 70 or 80 bucks to get the 2060. So... Why not get a 1080 for a similar price? You'll get two extra gigs of VRAM um, and a similar level of performance. But the 2080 Ti was pretty good. This wasn't a huge upgrade in terms of architecture. It was basically Pascal, but it allowed the CUDA core to execute on both the integer and floating point pipelines at the same time. Instead of doing one or the other like we saw in Pascal, now you could do both at the same time. So it significantly improved performance if you're doing mixed data type workloads, but for strictly FP32, I think that the 30 series is really where we saw the next big performance improvement. Now let's go ahead and talk about the RX 5000 series because that technically launched after the first 20 series cards. Um, but this this was pretty, pretty rough at launch. I remember AMD initially revealed the 5700 XT for what, like $449 and then an uh, lowered it to like 379 or like 400 or something like that, which I think was still a little bit too high. Either way, I think that these cards are actually pretty decent now. They probably weren't that decent back then. They were pretty, pretty inefficient, but that's been kind of fixed with driver updates. I have a 5700 XT review on the channel. I don't really have that much to say about it besides it, it, it just works now. Like I, it doesn't, doesn't have any of the AM dip, any of the AMD issues. Um, there aren't really that many driver issues. There was one issue with it overheating, but that was fixed by just replacing the thermal paste. But other than that, these cards are pretty decent. Are a pretty decent value. Wouldn't really recommend buying one in 2024 uh, unless you're buying like the 5700 XT instead of buying like a 5600 XT. Buy like I don't know, like a 6600 or a 6600 XT or even an RK750 if you're looking for that kind of performance. But as a whole, I remember these cards kind of being forgotten quickly because of the issues uh, and people just never came back for them, which is kind of a shame because they're actually pretty decent graphics cards. Now the 30 series, um, I would put in the Super or in the S tier, but unfortunately it was kind of held back by the cryptocurrency mining, if you guys remember what happened with that. Crypto made a huge comeback in 2020, in like late 2020, early 2021, and then into 2022. So basically the entire lifespan of these graphics cards was just cryptocurrency mining. So they were kind of unavailable, which is unfortunate because the performance update or the performance upgrades over the 20 series were pretty significant if you're doing like graphics workloads, but for everything else, it was pretty similar to the 20 series. In terms of performance per watt. Like I said, it, it would be a Pascal level generational uplift, but unfortunately it was just held back by cryptocurrency mining. So it's still a pretty good generational uplift, but not like not what it could have been, like what we saw with the 40. If if we saw the 40 series launch um at like the 30s series prices where it was supposed to be, the 40 series would be like an S tier. But unfortunately, because of cryptocurrency mining, it's just that's just what ended up happening. RX 6000 series, I have a little bit of experience with the 6700 XT. Um, I haven't made any like, content on it. I mean, they work, they're pretty decent graphics cards in terms of comp of like competition to the 30 series, which was their main competition at the time. It just, it just works, which is something that I could say about the 5700 XT as well. Um, 
but I think the big area that made people care about these graphics cards was just the fact that it could clock significantly higher than the 5000 series. It was a little bit more efficient, but the clock speeds made like something like a 5700 XT, even though it actually had a narrower bus than a 5700 XT. Uh, it actually performs significantly better than a 5700 XT. So I would say it's probably on the same tier as the 30 series, not a, on the tier as the same tier as the 10 series because of cryptocurrency mining, it affected the RX 6000 series the same way that it affected the 30 series. But yeah, I mean, I don't think it was a bad graphics card launch. I don't think it was like some like legendary super tier launch like a 10 series. Um, now the 40 series, uh, 40 series, I would say is probably about a B tier just because the performance uplift that we saw over the, the 30 series was significant or not insignificant as what I should have said. It's not that it was, it's not that it wasn't insignificant, but the main area that we saw an upgrade over the 30 series was efficiency. Uh, pricing on these cards was significantly higher. So I've noticed that every other generation Nvidia will go like, oh, we're at one price, next generation, oh, we're at the next price. And then the next generation, they can maintain that price. And then the next generation, they, they increase it again. Kind of unfortunate, but 40 series is just a victim of that. I suspect that the 50 series is going to be similarly priced. And as a result, it's going to be a better deal than the, the 40 series, but not as good of a deal as the 30 series. Uh, which stinks because the 30 series doesn't have as much VRM as I think it should have had. 40 series kind of fixed that, but 40 series as a result was like $200 more expensive for a 4070, $500 more expensive for a 4080, and like $400 more expensive for a 4090. So at the lower tier of the market, the 4060 is actually pretty decent. I would recommend the 4060, but only if you've got the money to spend. If you're looking for something at a similar performance, but you're a little more budget conscious, a 3060 would suffice because it's got 12 gigs of VRAM. The price competitor, or not even the price competitor, just the generational competitor, I would actually argue is probably a similar uh, level as the 40 series. I could argue that this was an A tier launch, but once again, the prices were just so much higher this generation that it's just, it turned a lot of people off initially, and both the 40 series and the RX 7000 series haven't really recovered from that, that consumer issue of, oh, they're just too expensive, if you understand what I'm saying. Now, the A-Series. No, I'm kidding. A-Series was initially a, a probably a D or an F-Tier launch. I mean, everything just everything worked on it, but things didn't work really that well. Um, but since then, things have improved a lot. I feel like if we continue on this trajectory, we could get up to a B or an A-Tier, but right now it's, it's, it's pretty C-Tier, which is a shame because I really like this card and I think the architecture is pretty interesting. But... Unfortunately, you can't really argue with with how it performs and where it sits in comparison to other cards on the market. It performs, it, it runs all games now, but still it's got some performance issues, which is kind of what's holding me back from ultimately recommending it a ton. 